But first, whenever politicians say that something should be left to the so-called experts, you can be sure that's because the people would never vote for it. Every time the Australian people have been asked about carbon taxes and even higher emissions reduction targets, resoundingly, they've said no. Julia Gillard was forcing in a carbon tax, if you remember, without giving voters a say, knowing that if she did, she would have been sent packing. When they finally were asked in 2013, it was a landslide vote for no. And last year, Australians said no again to Labor's 45% emissions reduction target and no to Labor's 50% renewables target. Now, despite all of this, the climate cult true believer, independent Green Zali Stegall, well, she wants new laws to set emissions reduction targets via a so-called independent commission that's outside the parliament and, as a result, not accountable to you, the Australian people. Though not for a minute do I believe this overly complex legislative framework is the work of Stegall alone. Now, already there is far too much that's determined by unelected officials and far too many decisions that are made without any meaningful democratic input. Like all the planning decisions in our suburbs and decisions by bureaucrats that stop farmers clearing their own land. The last thing you need is to have more decisions that impact your daily life, like the type of car you're allowed to drive, the increasing cost of your power bill, the sort of job you can have, even the food you eat, made by some activist public servant who, unlike you, has got a good life and a secure future by virtue of the taxpayer. Frankly, we've already got far too many ministers who are driven by their public servants rather than the other way around. But this Stegall bill, if it ever eventuates, would just make a bad situation much, much worse. And just wait for ignorant and biased media types to start pressuring Scott Morrison. First, they'll want him to allow this private member's bill to be voted upon. And second, they'll be pressuring Morrison to allow a so-called conscience vote to take place. It's already started, in fact. Here's the member for Mayo, first elected under the Nick Xenophon banner, now as an independent today. We will be calling for a conscience vote for this bill. That means that nobody needs to cross the floor um, and we believe that we can make this work and this is an opportunity for all those modern Liberals um, to stand and take some action and let it, let it be beyond words. What rubbish. As a former staffer, Sharkey well and truly knows, the private members' bills, that's bills that don't originate from the government, are almost never voted upon in the House. And bills that are the subject of government policy are never free votes. They're certainly not matters of conscience, even though that's what her ill-informed newbie mate, Stegall, is demanding. That's because conscience votes are reserved for matters of life and death, issues like abortion and euthanasia, not an economic issue like Australia's emissions reduction program and the impact of it on industry and energy policy. But just for once, the climate war isn't simply one side of politics fighting against the other. Today, a branch of the CFMEU, that's right, the most militant union in the country, has declared that Australia needs to start opening new high-efficiency, low-emissions coal-fired power stations and to start considering emissions-free nuclear power if we're to have a better environment and more jobs now and into the future. And faced with a demand from inner city Liberals that there be no taxpayer subsidies for coal-fired power, the newly liberated former Resources Minister Matt Canavan fired back in a tweet, today telling lefty Libs to be consistent. And if that's their view, then we ought to stop subsidies for renewables too, he said. In his tweet, I see some are saying that we should not help coal-fired power stations provide jobs because we should leave it to the market. Well, if that's the view, be consistent, says Canafan, and argue against the billions we give to renewables every year. When it comes to time, the Prime Minister will have to decide these issues. And when he does, I hope he remembers the iron law of politics, that you don't win elections by agreeing with your opponents, nor do you win them fighting amongst your own. 
It wasn't that long ago that Malcolm Turnbull committed political suicide by trying to bring in green left laws. Morrison won't have forgotten this because wanting lower emissions is one thing. But delivering a lower standard of living to all Australians while outsourcing decision making to bureaucrats a la Steggall style, well that's something entirely different. And unlike his predecessor, I predict Morrison's far too much of a political animal to fall for it.